All right, you're asking for it, so here it is. Listen to this. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to episode two of whatever, how many, because we back at it. And, uh, and I don't know how to number them, name them, or anything, but we back at it uh, of the Drinking Partners Podcast. We are now here at Emerald City in the boardroom because we ain't just going to be keep doing this shit in basements. We boardroom <laughs> material. That, I think that's a Moving on up. <laughs> we like, we boardroom material. We need some swank surroundings. We downtown now. We corporate and shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's it's, it's a level up and y'all, y'all been with us through so many iterations of so many anything, man. We still happy to do it. We happy to be back. All right. I'm half mm. of your hosting tandem, Ed Bailey. I'm joined as always with my co-host, Dave Bracey. Say what up to the people. What's good with you people? We are the Drinking Partners and if you're looking for us, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Lipson, Google Play, Google. and Spotify under Drinking Partners. And you can find us on IG, Twitter, and Facebook at Partners Pod. Uh, this is the second time, at least today, that we've been asking you. We've been asking you for years. We've been asking you for hundreds of episodes. And we will continue to ask you, please, hop on Facebook, hop on iTunes, rate and review. Uh, that's how we know what we're doing well. That's how we let others know that we're doing well. And that's how we continue to do well. So please, hop on iTunes, hop on Facebook, rate and review. Listen, you love us. You told us you missed us. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you told us you missed us, I heard from and so somebody. and so we trying to we trying to stay consistent, right? For the sake of consistency, mm -hmm. all right, we gonna keep it the same as always. We want you to hop on rate and review, let us know what we're doing. But in lieu of those rates and reviews, mm -hmm. we do still accept shots of Hennessy. Yeah. Okay, that's some, Hennessy yeah, didn't go out of business during COVID. <laughs> they still making bottles. I know, yeah. I know. Wine and Spirit said that they ain't had none for a while, but they still got it. All right, yeah, and fine. and. Due to the new surroundings, because mm -hmm. we got like nice lamps in here. Really like, bold. look at this fixtures here. It's hey, nice. This the is architecture in this motherfucker. So we stepped it up a little bit, and we now accept shots of Glenlivet. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. we Scotch that. Daddy. Petey, that give, give us give us some of that Pete. Hashtag Scotch Daddy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We stepped it up. Hey, look, and we we starting to get back outside, man. And one of the, one of the main things you know us for, one of the main things that we we looking to do, we're excited about. Uh, we need y'all to stay responsible so it can still happen at its capacity. It's Barrel and Flow, April. Oh, I'm sorry, not April, August 13th. You know what I'm saying? My man D gonna hit you with the. Uh, with the with D with the details over D here. D with the you know details. I, mean? I, I had a better. I was trying to come <laughs> with something. I said D gonna hit you with the math, D for <laughs> division for math, but whatever it is. Barrel and Yo, Flow, August 13th. Barrel and Flow, August 13th. We've got 75 breweries coming in, uh, 30 of which are black owned, and then we have 45 breweries doing uh, one off collaborations uh, with black artists, entrepreneurs, um, other black owned breweries. Uh, we've got 30 food trucks coming in, um, 30 goods and service vendors, uh, 15 nonprofits. Uh, we got two stages. Uh, one for DJs and uh, one for live music. Uh, there's a VIP portion of that thing. And uh, yeah, man, it's uh, August 13th down at the Strip District. Uh, the Stacks at Three's Crossings. Um, it's a whole day event, uh, 12 to 9 p.m. Um, you know, and if you want to go even further, say you want to, you know, figure out how to get into this industry, um, you know, in and, and, and a more substantial way. Uh, August 12th, we'll be down at the um, Double Tree Green Tree. Um, we'll have conferencing from nine to five. We'll have a bottle share that evening. And then Sunday, uh, we will have a brewer's brunch where we're pairing um, food with uh, some booze. Uh, you get to network throughout those um, opportunities. I mean, through those uh, events, um, learn some things. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, 12 to nine on Saturday. It's a it's a good event to come down. And even if you even if you are not uh drinking that day we have an arts enthusiast ticket come down enjoy the uh enjoy the food enjoy the music enjoy the arts uh we got two live artist stages that'll be curated by boom concepts uh one of those stages is uh sponsored by angry orchard so um yeah no come down uh you know august 13th august 12th through the uh 14th and that's uh tickets barrelandflow.com Yes, sir. Get some information. Get some vibes, man. Have some fun. Let's get outside. Mm -hmm. Outside, like literally outside, mm -hmm. like in the sunshine. You know, the sun kills shit. So anything, any illness, it kills. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Don't, 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 
box that out because I don't want us to get sued. Yeah, no, but I, I, you know, you you know, a, a, a caveat to that, you know, vaccinations. I mean, are required for this. You know, I mean, throughout, you know, they do save lives. I know I, I got hit with that, and I, it was not that terrible. It is the leading cause of death for folks in our age range, and it felt like a, a mild cold because shout out to Dolly Parton, she out there killing it with the uh, Modernas. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a vaccinated situation. I guess situation. we could give her the credit. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> But look, w- leading up to the event, man, we think it's inter- it's it's important to introduce you to some of our Flow family. So mm-hmm. our episodes will, you know, feature a lot of individuals who will be involved in the festival, like this one here today. We got Lauren Hughes from Necromancer Brewing. Say what up to the people. What's up, folks? Ooh, all right, oh, straight all to right, the point. Man, I mean, she business. ain't bullshitting. <laughs> business. She here to talk all about business. <laughs> all business all the time. All, all business, all, all business, all beer, all the time. What's the third B? It's got to be three Bs. Business, beer. Bikes. Okay. Oh. I like bikes. Well, now, what type of bike are you talking about? I have a gravel bike. Like a, like like a bike. A, like, a, like, like a bicycle. bicycle? Like a bicycle. See, I thought you were going to say motorcycle. Man. My wife you won't know. let me have a motorcycle. See, fucking, mm. the, but the bikes. Okay. So. My wife won't let me have a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> too, yeah. It's, just, that's a, it's an instant death situation. I'm not going to go slow. <laughs> I'm going to keep it a buck. I was thinking about getting a bike license, even mm. though I done been through some shit in cars. I don't think my wife want me to do it. I also was like, I ain't gonna do it because then I'm an old man, right? That's like a quarter life crisis thing. You either getting the bikes, yeah. you getting the bikes as a teenager, or yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you just you look don't awkward. Start might like your motorcycles at 36, do you? But my uncle, so my uncle, he was a rough rider. He passed away, and he like he has a motorcycle. I'm like I'm like somebody gotta take it in the family. Yeah. I'm gonna just go ahead and learn. But that's also I think an excuse for the quarter life crisis. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean you could you could ease into that. I I can see that a transferable situation. You know what I mean? But you just going out and just grabbing a bike out of nowhere. It's nah, like nah. Do you got bike friends. I got to you know I mean? find a, a new gang. Like you gotta you gotta change your lifestyle. Be riding the bike to shows and shit. <laughs> Riding the bike to breweries. You can't be on a motorcycle go to a brewery. Man. You can't ride a bike home. I'll be going 35 on the bike. I, I'm, not, I'm not supposed to have that. I th- thank y'all for talking, that, talking me through that. So, uh, welcome, welcome to the cast. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, you are the head brewer. That's um, true. And yep. Necromancer and whatnot. Um, I, I I think I met you first. Uh, you were brewing down in uh, Rock Bottom. That's right. Uh, back in the day and whatnot. So, uh, you know, for the folks that don't know, uh, how did you uh, how did you get into brewing? Uh, a long, long time ago in college. I got into home brewing. Uh, I got into craft beer by the same guy. Thanks, Gerald. He got me into craft beer and I was drinking it. And he was like, you know, you can make this, right? I was like, no, no, you can't. You can't. It's like, you need like science. You weren't necessarily you, wrong. Like you need to have like a plant or something, right? He's like, no, you can make this at home. And I was like, okay, well, how much does it cost? And he's like, no, 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 it's not going to be that bad. So we actually, we went and got a, a homebrew kit because as soon as I found out you could like buy the stuff to do it. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll make it. Uh, and then I started making beer on my own uh, and that was totally fun. I was hooked and I was homebrewing all the time. And then... My next, what, I'm sorry, but what is the legalities of like homebrewing? Is it you? Can you just homebrew? Is you can that just legal? Because well, it is drug making. You making it, drugs in it your feels basement? Like, you know I mean? it's it's, like and talking to the brewers, it feels like can you afford it? Is yeah. this because I because my college experience did not involve buying random ass equipment. No, no, <laughs> no. I had I had I had about five dollars. I didn't even have the books. <laughs> I was borrowing books. There was no way. Yeah, I was and we didn't it. have like the like. I guess we did have the internet, but it wasn't as well sourced. Are oh, you as still it is hooked up days. to that internet? Yeah, it, like I had to go to the library for that shit. You know what I mean, right. like it was on borrowed time, but yeah, yeah. Just you just need some pots and pans. Yeah. I mean, my first homebrew setup was literally like a couple stock pots. Mm. Do you have to be 21 to? I think, no, I don't think so. Cause it's not actually alcohol until you make it. And I think it is legal in most places now. I don't remember if it was legal or not then where I was, uh, but I, I up some... to a certain point you couldn't, you couldn't make a certain amount. Yeah, I'm, I made, we made wine in biology class in 10th grade biology class. We do some yeast. And some grape juice 
And that was like, you know, that was the fermentation process. And that's when I realized that, you know, that's when we learned that, like, you know, alcohol is basically like yeast piss, right? Like, or is it, is it yeast get like breathing? Is that, like, what's the function it's a for byproduct, yeast? Byproduct, whatever. I mean, it's, like, bi- it's, it's yeah. waste, right? Yeah. Like, it's just like they get rid of it. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, so, but like, yeah. So, I mean, I guess if we could do it then, and we, we, we weren't supposed to drink it. Corey Garcia, say, gonna... the guy that would drink it, like, or eat anything, we'd pay him a dollar to eat whatever. Why you put his government out there? Yeah, well, because he did it, though, like, <laughs> like, like is, I, that, I, is that still his thing? I just, I mean, like he was, he was, he was one of those dudes that you knew his first and last name, and he, he was might a be legend. at UPMC or something, right? Like, <laughs> Listen, if, he, if he's still alive, <laughs> shout out to Corey Garcia for, yeah, I mean, for drinking the uh, unfiltered wine. That yeah, I mean, I don't know what the ABV was on that. Yeah, I mean, but like you know, he drank it, but we weren't supposed to. But anyway, we did that, and I think it was legal because we did it in school. So at least. Nah. No, no. I mean, we, no. I I want to know who this who this teacher is that's having all these students make him wine for Ooh, free. See, I didn't even think at about the, the side of, hustle. Yeah, at the end of this project, <laughs> what did you do with your wine? <laughs> we 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 did like, we didn't do anything. We were he was just like, and that's wine. And we sniffed it, and, and he we was were like, like, oh, this smells like alcohol. And then he took it home. So there you go. <laughs> he that. started being late to class. <laughs> <laughs> Start carrying a thermos. <laughs> And wine blends. <laughs> this is the day in Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> so you were so you started you started in your basement. Were, were you in the basement? Like you just got a you got a homebrew kit. I got a homebrew kit. It was in my kitchen and on my porch. Yeah, I did that for a while. Uh, and when I finished my coursework, there was a brewery. I had moved to Indianapolis, and there was a brewery there, Sun King, that was hiring uh, volunteers. You, you had to volunteer before you could get hired there. It was back back before no. that was illegal. Oh, that, that, the uh, old school <laughs> capitalist hustle. <laughs> <laughs> old school yeah. capitalist yeah. hustle. Yeah, we got to turn You had that. to buy your In freedom. In the black community. <laughs> <laughs> you had to buy your freedom. <laughs> yeah, so I did that for about a year and I loved it. Uh, and that kind of sparked me wanting to do it professionally. Um so I was at Sun King for a couple of years, and then I did the whole music thing because that was what I got my degrees in. Begrudgingly, I really didn't want to do it. I was just like, "Well, I got all these degrees, and beer making is fun, but whatever." Wait, you you got to do so. You're you're a musician. I was yes. Are, are, do you ever lose the music ability? Like, if I gave you a, a, a instrument, would you not be able to play it anymore? Oh yeah, like classical musicians aren't. Well, not all of us, uh, but it's not like you can just hand me a clarinet and I know how to play it. Yeah. <laughs> I played French horn in college. Um, yeah. I can play a trumpet. I can play French horn. Uh, it probably wouldn't sound as good because my muscles are all. Oh, so you're out of practice. Oh, oh wait, I'm so out of practice. Your jaw muscles be different when you. Uh, it's it's all of yeah, all your lip muscles. If you don't keep it up, mm. you sound like crap. Yeah, no, I, I get that. that wouldn't even think sense. about yeah, it. Man. I wouldn't even have thought of that. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. are y'all good kissers? You don't have to answer, for, but like. It's yep. muscular. I never kissed a muscular lip. Yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> uh, you can get a point hard. across. Like, oh, yeah, I mean, if I'm angry at somebody, it's like an extra angry face. Like, yeah, I mean, like, like kissing the bumper of my car. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, so you, so you went to school for music, and then you got out. You, you're brewing, and then you said you didn't want to play music. You were like, fuck it. You begrudgingly did music. Uh. I mean, I liked it, but it was like the only thing I went to school for and the only thing I thought I could do. Mm. Uh, and I got burned out pretty quickly. Uh, mm. And I was performing for a bit and then I taught for a bit and then I did uh, arts administration. So I was teaching at uh, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. It's such a long name. IUPUI. IUPUI. The, the thing that they nor- they randomly show up on the sports ticker and you're like, yep. it ain't IUP? <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? Because I told them, I'm like, IUP. They're like, oh. I'm like, no, 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 it's not. <laughs> it's, it's not it's, a point yeah, of IUP. <laughs> Where is that? Is it in is it actually in Indiana? Yes, it is okay. in it is. It's so it's a so there's IU Bloomington, which is just Indiana University, right. and then there's IUPUI, which is like a campus in Indianapolis from that's half Purdue and half Indiana University. Don't ask me to explain why. You was I, on the right. staff. I was on <laughs> staff. <laughs> no one could explain it. Wasn't it wasn't in your service contract. <laughs> I told you that I taught music, you right? You was like a boiler making. I don't even know what that Indiana. What is the Indiana uh, mascot? The Hoosiers. The Hoosiers. You were a boiler making. What, who, what is, is a Hoosier? Hoosier? A tire as far as I know. Hoos- I was about to say, like, it sound like <laughs> overalls. Tire? Yeah, like Hoosier tire. You got, You haven't seen like the Hoosier tire? Hoosier tire? It's a tie. 
tire. No tire. Like on, on car, car Oh, a tire. I thought you meant a tire. Like well, that's how clothing. Mi- how come Michelin don't have a collar? <laughs> like, it's, it's literally a tire, well, like it's, rubber. It's a brand of tire, but th- that's what I always associated with it because I'm originally from Florida. I was like, what is this Hoosier crap? They said that it was a person from Indiana. So I guess like a Yenzer, maybe? A racist. <laughs> it's, 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 it is a racist. Oh, I, it it's sounded, a, oh, it is a two. So that's that what, doesn't oh, even have any tread. They got the racing out there. It's There's the, um, no tread Indian, on that. Indian, Indian 500. Oh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, now we come also full circle. Very racist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you in all? Yes, it's very much that. Wow. Okay, I did not. Oh shit. So you um, when you when you went into administ- or teaching? Uh, well administration and teaching what had you stopped doing beer because i was at one point it sounded like you had done it straight out of college mm-hmm. which is an interesting. i was yeah i was still home brewing i did quit the job at sun king just because i couldn't keep up mm-hmm. working two jobs with like a teaching job um and then that's what brought me here is i was doing uh arts administration at the indianapolis symphony i was man- helping to manage some of their uh classical programs and I got hired at the Pittsburgh Symphony here to manage classical and pops programs uh eventually moving to all pops. It was a great job. I my heart just wasn't in it. Like I did it for about 3 and a half years and it was it's a it's a lot of work. It's you know, you're you're there all the time. It's like 60 hour weeks and you really got to love it. And I enjoyed that job, but I was getting frustrated and my wife was like, "Why don't you just go back into beer again? You love it." I'm like just try and be a brewer and then I love I her. She's the best, right? She's, she's awesome. Just off of that alone. <laughs> Why don't you just leave this symphony, this established thing? And leave this job that's giving us an income and go go <laughs> pursue your dreams, babe. You you do you. Uh, so I did. I quit and then I uh, worked my way up and then got the job at rock bottom and the rest, I guess, is history. That is, I, I would say, so one, you kept doing it. That's, that's dope. Because we hear about like folks, they'll start home brewing in college and then they'll just have this other career path and it seems like the beer thing kind of stopped for a minute but you kept it going had to put it to the side for a second but then the familial support was like hey look you're not happy by virtue of you not being happy we can't be at our you know best so go out here and do it and, and you climbed the ladder and at rock bottom because it was her and you it was you and meg that's right. there so like that that's a dope situation yeah. like they yeah that was good kept kept the diversity going so mm-hmm. now how did you end up like Necromancer? How did that come about? So I worked at Rock Bottom for a bit, and then I got hired at Penn Brewery. Uh, was the assistant head brewer there, and then uh, for Necromancer, I was. It was during the pandemic. Uh, Andrew Witchy uh, from Dancing Gnome actually texted me and was like, "Hey, I've got a buddy that's trying to open a brewery and needs a head brewer, and I thought you'd be a good fit. Are you interested?" And I was like, "Yes." <laughs> uh, and then I connected with Ben, and we we hit it off the bat immediately. He like hired me on the spot. I was, I got done with that interview and I was told my wife, I was like, I think I have the job. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then, and then it took off. Um, it's, it's been great. So what, so what, what does a brewer interview even like, like, is like, what is a brewer interview? Do you just give him your beer and be like, that's, that's me, uh, bro. Yeah. You know I mean, show up with beer. Good yeah, question. Yeah. I that's mean, a good question. like, cause like, cause you know, like, yeah. Like describe what is your process. Yeah. Like what's a brewer? Like how do you <laughs> hire like a, yeah, I mean a good brewer. You know what I mean, uh, I mean, he had had the beer at Penn, so I guess he, he liked it. Um, yeah. no, I gave him my resume and, Honestly, with that whole interview, it was almost, sorry, Ben, it was almost like he was courting me, like there was a PowerPoint, and he was like, this is what I want to do, and are you interested? And I was like, yes, this sounds awesome. I've never had an interview like this, and like in any career, it was it was pretty cool. Uh, no, you, you give it, you give a resume. He did want uh, some test batches, <laughs> to test batches, which oh, meant yeah. I had to homebrew some stuff. A, so we were trying to figure out recipes for the brewery, and then B, I'm, I'm pretty so sure. So he, he had was, you working. From the interview, so you he owes you a couple of days income. Well, no, no, he, <laughs> we, we think, he was we, giving him recipes. <laughs> at the interview. Yeah, I mean, like, I need your resume. I mean, I need you to fill out an application. Then I need your resume. I need a couple of ideas. <laughs> uh, after after the interview is when I I did some some test batches. Um, it was more for like R and D to to figure out what some house beers would be that we were gonna have. Um. Yeah, and he enjoyed them. I brewed them on my homebrew system because there was no way in hell I was going to brew those at Penn. Yeah. <laughs> 
So do you get like some slack on that? Like, yo, you got a what is it in track where you got the wind adjusted time? It's like, yo, this is a homebrew adjusted beer. Like, yeah, yeah, essentially. It's, <laughs> Imagine this. Imagine this, but twenty barrels. Yeah. Hey, like, <laughs> here is something I brewed on some pots and pans. Uh, it's. I bet it'll taste better, uh, not in pots and pans, but I did my best. What do you think? <laughs> I like ask you weird questions like, all right, give me a time where you and a coworker had a disagreement and you needed to go to management. How did you handle that? <laughs> right? Because like what matters, like yeah, you know I mean, like what do what what does matter? Like if I brew some good shit, I come in and it's like, I don't know, it's like a like the combines type thing. Like if I perform well, fuck, you got it. Like, right? You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? So, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. What do you put on a brew resume? Outside of I brewed here, I brewed here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we <laughs> you see me over here already. Skills bro. brewing. <laughs> <laughs> Attributes we, I brew. We I put, got what you need. <laughs> we put fancy words for it, like wort creation on a thirty barrel oh. system or a thirty hectoliter system, and wort creation. Yeah, wort creation. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a, a only that on. only in the brewing industry. Yeah, is wort creation a, a positive? You know what I mean, that's yeah, a, just yeah. what I'm saying. That's a. Yeah. But that's some 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 science. You got to science it up. But it does make sense if you say what systems you've worked mm-hmm. on. All right, all right. Oh uh, yeah, equipment and shit that you're using and whatnot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what like what have you, you know, coming from fr- coming from a home brew situation into a professional? What is like the hardest thing for a brewer to come in from, you know, making that transition? It's completely different. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. Uh, like the same ideas, but you're going from, you know, maybe using a siphon or like this tiny little chugger pump to transfer everything to using giant pumps and, and hard piped systems. I think that is probably the biggest change that and using chemicals that can kill you and, you know, so like the general idea of like, yeah, you're going to mix this grain with some warm water and convert the starches to sugars and then you're going to boil it like that all stays the same. But how it gets in there and how it goes, it's like learning plumbing. And, uh, you know, flow dynamics and all that other stuff. This is more like the engineering side mm-hmm. of things that come in as opposed to just like the cooking. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's funny you mentioned cooking because I was going to ask, in a lot of our interviews, folks have like a cooking background or something like that or an engineering background. Now, you with music, how did music translate into that when you started brewing and things like that, if at all? Throwing a lot of shit at a wall. Throwing a lot of <laughs> shit at a wall. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think music helps with the creative side because it's also a creative thing. But for the science, that was all stuff I had to learn uh, as far as uh, the chemistry and biology. See, this is dope because she like really came from the ground floor with that. Like there was no that's how I'm like thinking with music. I mean, I guess with so you're wearing classical music, you said. So there's kind of a I don't want to say a formula, but each song is its own formula. Mm -hmm. And I guess each beer is its own Mm -hmm. formula type thing. So I guess you're familiar in that sense. But to just, it just seems so starkly different to go in and be like, all right, well, I'm, I've been doing this and you know what? I'm just going to fuck with this full time. Mm-hmm. And I got to explain this to my wife. Each cup is, <laughs> each cup is a song. Each cup is a song. What's your, what's your, uh, syst- what is, what's a St. Beethoven symphony? Your like, like beer. a beer that I've made that's a symphony? Yeah, yeah. What's your, oh, geez. That's a loaded question. Your magnum question. opus. Uh, there we I mean, go. Thank you for naming one. Because I don't think he made a symphony <laughs> called Beethoven Symphony. <laughs> 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 this <Aww>. is mine. <laughs> play Beethoven Symphony. <laughs> Google. Siri. <laughs> Siri. Play, <laughs> play that Beethoven. one. <laughs> play This Is Mine by Beethoven. <laughs> Oh man, uh, that's a tough question. Um, it was a dumb question. You know, it's a tough question. It's just, I mean, because you be you be making a lot. We making a lot of yeah, stuff. I mean, so yeah. because I know that in so what you've you've brewed what over a hundred some beers just at Necromancer. Yeah, and y'all just opened up what, in how a long year. Ago? A year ago, yes. In a year. Yeah, we did a hundred and thirteen batches, and I think it's eighty something of those are. Uh, Individual recipes. E something of those. Like, and you just lose track. You're like, just listen, I, I got you. I stopped counting. <laughs> so two questions. How how many do you have on tap at any given time? And then how much, if, you, if you're at 80, how much do they vary? Like, what's the variance between? They vary a ton. So we usually have eight on tap. 
at a time unless we have some can pours available and then it can get up to 10. Um, and like right now we have a cream ale, a Lichtenheiner, a double hazy IPA, a double West Coast IPA, a black IPA, a Merce Burger. What else do we have on tap? Coit beer. So that's the diversity. And they usually kick, if we release beers one week, they're, they're usually gone by the next. So what the fuck is a Lichtenheimer, right? So I explain, brought one. You're gonna find yeah, out. Yeah, we're, okay. we're gonna find out. Ex- so explain, explain the you know the uh, I guess the you know like the drive behind uh, Necromancer and whatnot, and you know, and and I guess you know uh, whether or not that was like discussed up front, and if that was an attraction piece, because. Oftentimes you find things at Necromancer that you just don't find any fucking like where. Like you know I mean? Right? Yeah, I ain't never been a, like, I mean, one of them lickies. You know what I mean? Like it don't. And a coit. Coit is. <laughs> you, it, that coit is a famous street in Cleveland. Like if you're from East Cleveland, you know coit. And it ain't nothing good coming on coit. Oh, I'm interested in drinking <laughs> a coit. Perfect cleaner than that, folks. <laughs> nah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was something that. That Ben approached me with the reason the the brewery is called Necromancer is that Necromancer is resurrect dead things, uh, and what uh, Ben's vision was was to resurrect old beer styles that have kind of gone away or haven't been done in a long time. Uh, and for me, that sounded awesome because you know at at Penn Brewery we make a lot of the same thing over and over, uh, and you get to make a couple one offs here and there, but it, you know it can get a little monotonous. And for somebody who likes to research a lot. I was like, this sounds dope. Like, I can just research beer styles and try it. I mean, it was dope and intimidating. Um, But it was, let's look at this. Let's look at some historical stuff. How did they make it? And then try and make it to where uh, people in 2022 will actually drink it. (laughs) Because a lot of the old beers probably didn't taste great. Hmm. That was going to be my question. Like, why did these styles... Yeah, you know, why do they like die off and whatnot? And like, what do you, like? What are what are some things that you do to like? I guess modernize them so that they're you know drinkable. And then, is this something that you were doing beforehand? Did you have like a love for like dead styles, or is that something that you were like? Now that what did he tell you? Yeah, like the interview making a lot of sense now. Yeah, you know what I mean, <laughs> like or was he like you know he's like yo, I got we gonna do dead styles. And like yeah, you know I mean like you know how do you you know and and you were like yeah, let's do it. Like you know how 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 does that? Uh, I mean, I hadn't had a lot of experience doing dead styles like i had read about old beer styles but as far as like brewing them a ton no but i did have a lot of experience doing traditional styles and a lot of those styles have kind of gone away and it, for me it was a challenge i was like that sounds like we could a it sounded like a good business plan because it was something to differentiate us from everybody else and b it sounded like a challenge and i was like i like okay let's try it sure um, and then, yeah, so as far as, like, what I do, so, like, the Lichtenheiner is fruited. A Lichtenheiner is a smoked sour. Smoked sour. Fruit. Yeah, so. Smoked fruited sour? Huh? A smoked fruited sour? So we put fruit in ours, because I, when we said we were going to make one, I was like, I don't know if people are, because people are iffy on sour. It's like, some people are like, I don't like sours, and there's, it's, there's also that divide in smoked beers, and I'm like, now we're, now we're going to mix them together. Um, so I was like, let's, let's chill it out a bit by putting fruit in it, or, um. You know, a lot of these beers weren't hopped or, you know, they had something weird in there for hops. And it's kind of just trying to pay homage to that, but also make it something that people are going to enjoy so that it kind of resembles something that they are familiar with, but still giving them something new uh, and something that they'll they'll drink. I didn't know that beer. I, th- I thought hops was like a thing that you had to put in beer. And that's what made it beer, right? Yeah, like, I mean, without hops, like, is it, like, was it, so it's, it's like the four ingredients, it's like the the old gerb, is it mm-hmm. like water, Barley. malt, yeast, and hops, is that the mm-hmm. thing? So, like, there were, used to be beers without hops, so they there was used just There used to be eating, beers without hops. They was just, like, eating just, like, fermented oatmeal. Well, I mean, they just would use, uh, like, different herbs, Instead of hops, it was like oregano's. You know, they're drinking root. an oregano oh, beer. That's right? crazy. Like, you know, the the Italian seasoning. That's they just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> Italian seasoning. This is our like, first date. I'm gonna take you out and have a parsley beer. I want you to get too wasted. <laughs> I want to get to know you. Here's some thyme beer. Thyme <laughs> beer. Here's some thyme oh, beer. So thyme beer. <laughs> beer at brunch. <laughs> So how does that how does the process change with some of these older styles? Especially those that I guess didn't include hops and things like that where you have to 
Oh, I put hops in that. Right. I take and put hops in them. Uh, we had one that we did that was a Pennsylvania swanky, uh, and it was supposed I to like have that. swanky. I like swanky. that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if that's a real thing or you just made that up. It is. Up. It is. It was a. It was a, a real thing, and they used to make it with licorice, and they used to call it pop because it was kind of like a precursor to the pop because it was like a dark mild, but it had ginger and it had licorice. And it had sugar in it, and when they were transporting the bottles, they would pop, and then that's how pop got its name. Oh, oh shit! shit. Just look at that game. Oh, you really been, you've been researching out here. I like the internet; it's great. Uh, <laughs> so it's like a cola beer, kind of. So we made ours, but we couldn't put a ton of licorice in there. A because licorice is super hard to work with, but B the TTB kind of regulates it a little mm. bit because it can give people heart palpitations. Mm. Also, so licorice is fucking de- I was like, gonna, just terrible. Is this like, black I, licorice? Or is this yeah, twizzler? yeah, yeah. Like aniseed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll just put a bunch of Twizzlers in yeah, there. Yeah, I was saying. <laughs> so the way we got around it is I just looked to see. I was like, there has to be some hop somewhere that has a licorice aroma. <laughs> like we've got some that have sage and we've got some that have jasmine. Like there's got to be some somewhere that has licorice or anise. And uh, there is. There's one in that from Poland. Uh, so I ordered this stuff from Poland, and it, it was great. It, it gave it the licorice aroma, and it had this woodsy flavor to it. We we uh, hopped it late in the boil to try and get the flavor out, and it turned out great. Where do you find the catalog of hop? The internet. Just, I mean, like, what's the? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I, yeah, I just, I mean, I just scoured the internet to find. You know, I'd ask. So there's no like actual database. There, there is a, if for some suppliers, and I like, I reached out to Yakima Chief, and I was like, hey guys, do you have anything that has liquor? And they were like, no. And then I had to like <laughs> dig a little deeper, and I was like, is there any place overseas that has them? Maybe there's some French hops, or maybe there's some, you know, noble hops. And then I just stumbled upon this, and I was like, all right. We're going to try that. It worked out. People loved it. It was, a, it was a good beer. So what are we drinking right now? This is the common people. That's a German style Pilsner. This is like one of their regulars. So this is, so this is a very alive style. Yeah, this is an alive style. I brought, I brought a couple other did. I, I thought I would start, you know, you gotta start have, it you off, start off easy. You got to have that. So you, you, were, you, were, you were brewing a lot of this over back at the, in Penn, right? Yes, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, you know, straight Pilsners and whatnot. And what is it about, like, a Pilsner that, you know I mean, for folks, you know, maybe just be tuning in first, first time or whatever, you know what I mean, to this, to this podcast or whatever. What is it about uh, Pilsners that, like, you know, brewers go crazy about? And, like, why is it so hard to, like, nail a good Pilsner? Uh, it's a lager, and there's nothing to hide behind. You're just, I mean, most Pilsners just have Pilsner malt. Um, ours have a couple, a little bit of Munich in there and, and, and some stuff in there, but it's there's nothing you can hide behind. You're just, you've got such a light malt base that there's, if there's any flaws in this beer, you're going to be able to tell. No adjuncts in them. No mind. adjuncts, no. This is this is a beer people's beer. A German Pilsner is supposed to be a little hoppier, uh, so it's a little more floral and... Uh, Earthy and yeah, I mean it's just it takes a lot of time and I'm I'm pretty much a stickler since I worked at Penn. I'm I'm a stickler to make sure that loggers stay in the tank. Right. You know, and Ben will be like, Can we have it now? And I'm like, No. <laughs> no, you can't. Um, for it. so they take eight weeks. I do the whole eight week process. Yeah, um, man, that's wow. I mean that's a that's It's a, a labor process. of love because I love drinking it. I I'm sad that that is no longer on tap because uh I was drinking a lot of lager. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's because so from my understanding, like a lot of people like, you know, Kolsch is a thing I mean, mm-hmm. because it has kind of a lager flavor, but you ain't got to hold that bit for like, it's you know, so light. Eight, yeah, you ain't got to ha- have it as long or whatever, um, you know, in the in the tank. Uh, how do you can I can I ask real quick before you get off the, the pills? Now, how do you put your signature on a style like a German style Pilsner where you have to be very disciplined in it? Um, it has to be, you know, super clean and things of that nature. Like, how do you put your your stamp on it? Uh, I think it's uh, with with some of the malt. So I do want to. I did want to bread it up a little bit by adding okay. a little Munich malt, and then the hops. Um, we use Pearl Spalt and uh, Heller Toe Select on these. And I think for a pilsner, if you're trying to make like your your little niche in the little thing, um, I think it's going to be with those two things. Like, how can you make that base? ready but still clean and then showcase some hops that some people might not actually get a much of especially with the ipas yeah i mean you know like i i I hate the fact that like you know like the hazies you know they they they'll they'll brew it and because they don't want to hold it for as long 
they'll just put it out and it just be it just be so burning like I like my like my esophagus is just yeah. all the heartburn and it's just like ah right, and like you know I've, I've been I've been campaigning for this do not open till or like don't drink till like date where like because I mean mm. if you're gonna put out a young hot burning ass beer at least put it on the can and say hey hold this in your fridge for like a month I had a beer I won't say which but I had it and like and I forgot about it. And it was an IPA because everybody tells you about an IPA, you know, with the hazies or whatever IPAs that they got to be fresh. They got to be as fresh as possible. And like, I forgot about it. And then I came back a month later and it was like, like delicious. I had, I had it first. It was burning. And I was like, the hell with this. And I forgot about it. I came back like a month later and it was like juicy mm-hmm. and soft and like delicious. And I was like, why in the hell would you not like, I mean, but you know, it's because you had to like hold it, I guess. You know what I mean, yeah. so I do appreciate your um, enthusiasm and holding it until it's until it's just right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about this forbidden fruit. Okay, so the, <laughs> the forbidden fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. she, she holds true. All right, what All right. the fuck is that? That is crazy. That's yeah. a Lichtenheiner. So that is a Lichtenheiner. That's a Lichtenheiner. Yeah. Oh, the smoked. Yo, this is delicious. Thank this you. is crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. I've never thought of a smoked fruit anything. It don't even kind of kind of like, like you throw that. like pineapples on the grill, but I you don't. I mean? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. No, <laughs> but see, I don't. I, <laughs> so there's the thing. <laughs> so, so yeah, tell tell us about tell us about this creation and how it came about. Mango, guava, and passion fruit. See, I've never grilled a uh, guava. I'm not even sure we know tough. what a guava is. What no, is it? we don't. It's a fruit. Yeah, but what, it's it's kind of anytime <laughs> I know so you're talking. Say. I mean, I, I, <laughs> anytime I've had guava, it's been in, in it's been processed. It's been like in a. You've like never paste. like had a guava. You've never bitten never into a guava. No, I haven't guava. bitten in an, into a guava. No. Can you bite into it? Do you have to peel it? Is it is it a pitted fruit? Like what the hell is a? I need I need I my brewer Nina a... to tell me. <laughs> Nina. <laughs> yeah. So this is a Lichtenheiner. Uh, this is our. Is this the third one we've this is the third one we've done. So the first one we did was blackberry peach. Uh the second one we did was blueberry apricot, and then we have this one. And uh so you have it's a it's a kettle sour uh that we use smoked weed in. Uh and then we put fruit in it. And Ooh. it's oh it's zippy. Wow. Are they all do they all do they have to be smoked to be a Lichtenheimer? Has to be smoked oh, to be a Lichtenheimer. Got a okay, thank you, Buzzy. That ain't something I've never like. seen. That. I've never seen so that. I guess before. you gotta you gotta Being peel here, it and then you can just go ahead. I've and never spoon seen in that. that before. Being here with the screen is so nice. I can play an actual producer. It's role. like a lime watermelon. I was tomato. gonna say it looks Google, like a yeah. lime, like <laughs> yeah. a watermelon or tomato. Yeah, it's like a lime wello. Shout out to uh, shout out to Emerald City for yeah. this. Uh, you can you can eat the rind situation. Hell yeah, thank you. Oh, you can eat the rind. Oh yeah! Oh wow! So this is—I mean, this is man. This is the. So what is a what's a kettle sour? I never like. There's all kinds of sours and all that. Yeah, I mean, or whatever. What makes a kettle sour? A kettle sour. Kettle sours are. So what you're gonna do? And we actually do something different with ours, which I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Yeah, changing it up. Yeah, uh, hey, don't get fired on this episode. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Um, so well, kettle sour is usually what you do. <laughs> they can't do it. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, kettle sour is what you do is you get your runoff. You get all of your, your wort extracted from the, the mash. And then you'll pitch lactobacillus, which is a bacteria, which is the same bacteria. It produces lactic acid uh, from the sugar. So you'll sit, uh, put that in there. Uh, and you let it sit and do its thing until you reach about, for for me, it's 3.2 pH. pH is going to tell kind of tell you how sour it's going to be. And then you boil it as usual, knock it out, and then it ferments with clean yeast, as you would any other beer. But it, it's then soured because of the, the lactobacillus. So that's what a kettle sour is. It's a lacto, lactobacillus. Lactobacillus. So, but that's, <clears throat> that's different from like a Brett. Yes. Because the Brett is, is something that I don't even, what is Brett this Brett is a jerk. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if I've met any Brett that I like. So yeah, you're right. That, that's a jerk ass name. So but. yeah, Brett Brettanomyces is a, actually a wild yeast. Okay. Um, and usually, if you're going to do something with Brett, um, a lot of folks will do it in like a fooder or do it after the. It's part of the organisms that ferment uh, the beer, and it's not uh, pre ferment, which is what the the kettle sour is. Oh, okay. So pre ferment. Is a kettle mm-hmm. and ferment is more of a bread situation. Right, or whatever. So you could avoid it all them other names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all, I gotta got lost in all the <laughs> syllables. <laughs> like, 
So, somebody gonna be listening to this and enjoy the fact that you said all those words. Like, oh, and remember, it's not gonna be me. Right? <laughs> so let me ask though. So how do you all decide which styles to pursue? I usually just go to the go to the team and I'm like, well, what about this? And then sometimes they'll come to me and be like, what about this? We should do this. And this was one that actually came from a conversation uh, with Zach from Trace. He's like, have you ever done a Lichtenheiner? He's like, that would be cool. And I was found out what it was and I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. I don't know if anyone's going to drink it. Yeah, that sounds uh, like something he wanted to have but didn't want to produce. How about you go ahead and do that? Yeah, yeah. So, you know what would be dope? <laughs> <laughs> if y'all ain't licked it. <laughs> um, so we actually did the first Forbidden Fruit was a collab with Trace. Uh, okay. And we did we did it with them. And it, it turned out great. It was really sour. Uh, people loved it. It flew off the shelves. And I was like, okay, well, I guess... Ben and Aaron, who are the the two owners, they were both like, "This is good. This is gonna. We want this to be a uh, a reoccurring beer." And I was like, "Well, let's see how it goes first. Like, this might be one that sits on the shelf." It flew off the shelf, and I was like, "Well, I guess we're making it every couple months then." Uh, Man, when I heard about it, so Adam uh, down at Trace and whatnot, like he told me about it. He was like, "Oh yeah, we just did a the collab. It was a smoke sour, a smoke and sour." Like I immediately like and came fruit. down. Yeah, I mean, I came down and like immediately. So like, yeah, I helped those like shelves like fly off, and I was excited to see that it was like back because like he was like, I don't know if there's any left, but I went down like y'all had released another or whatever. So I mean, it, I I hope that this is more or less a staple because I I've never had it before, and I don't know anybody else anywhere locally that's doing anything like that. No, no. So no, some so are. somebody pop up with a Lichtenheimer, with how you handle that? Yeah, like, how do you oh, feel when you go and knock it off the shelf? Like, if they <laughs> can't, the you just knock them off. Like, how you deal with that? And I then, mean, it, uh, what do they say? What is it? Imitation is the, the best form of flattery. Yeah, yeah. so you um, just go, I'll look at you. Yeah. Look at you trying to, look trying to make it. Work. You ain't even got the right fruit. <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be mango, guava, passion fruit all the way, or you're, you're not doing it right. Your pH all fucked up on this. <laughs> <laughs> fruit ain't got no rind. <laughs> you're rindless. You're rindless forbidden fruit. This peasant, this peasant fruit out of here. So, so you choose, so when you all choose like a style that hasn't been produced in a while, that hasn't been, like, do you all do several iterations or it's just like we well, don't we go wing in? It. Okay. We wing it. Well, we we usually do because we just with the production schedule that we have and having to go as fast as we do, we just kind of wing it. I mean, we taste it along the way, and we have a kind of a cup and model that if if it's not something that is up to our standards, we dump it. We haven't had to dump anything yet, thank God. Um, but uh, yeah, we just taste it along the way, and I kind of you know just think it through and use what I know to try and make it the best thing I think will work, and then. Sometimes awesome stuff happens like this guy. Yeah, you hit this one out the park. Thanks. Yeah, no, this is this is phenomenal. I mean, so what has the um, you know, how has the like community um, you know, I mean, kind of like uh uh you know, uh reacted to it or whatever because like you go to so many breweries and there's so many and you just start to see the same shit on tap all the time. Right. But like, cause that's what sells and that's what like you got to have. Everybody has to brew a hazy. Everybody has to have like, yeah, you know I mean, they're, you know, they're one sour or whatever. There's always like these things you got to hit so that like you pay the bills or whatever. Um, and you do have those on, but you also have these other, and, and it costs money to do that. Right. You know I mean, and you know, like, especially in canning it, like, you mean like the fact that you're able to take that, like I, I took home again. The fall was a thing that, like, that's when I was like, "Yo, who the like? Why? Like, how, like I, I, I became a fan because of that beer." But that's expensive to do. You know what I mean? Like, and you don't always know how people are going to react to that. So, how has the community reacted to the, the, you know, like perceived, you know, the the fact that you have all these like random like styles on or whatever? Are they like demanding more of the the regulars, or are they going like, you know, give me give me your next weird shit? Uh, I'm, they love it. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like if once we have a hazy on, when we have a hazy on, they fly off the shelves. Mm-hmm. I think that's just the way it is everywhere. But no, I have, I have people come up to me all the time saying how excited they are to have something different and to try all these different iterations of things that we're doing. Um, so, I mean, the, the, it still flies off the shelf. I mean, we're already, I, we released this last Saturday. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Um, so folks, are, folks are digging it and which is awesome cuz i you know going into this you don't you don't know how the public's going to be you know I, will they try this stuff some people might not but they we have some that just come in for the resurrections and anytime we release a new one they get super excited and they love trying all the different stuff so i think it's going really well do you believe that the 
I guess at least even locally, I mean, given that, I mean, that you'll see more experimentation, I guess. I mean, because it, it, it's weird to see how like craft beer started out as a very experimental, like, I mean, let's do shit that nobody else is doing. But then it became more of a business. And right. then it became like, all right, well, let's just, it came industry. It's like, all right, well, we got to pay the bills. So you started to see more kind of monotony. But like now it feels like people are starting to be more kind of adventurous because you have to separate yourself in some way or whatever. I mean, like, so do you think you'll see more of that moving forward? Like, yeah, I think so. I mean, the customer base seems to be, I mean, IPA is king. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah, People are going to love them. Um, and I love IPAs too. Uh, but I do see folks wanting to go to a brewery where there is a little bit more diversity in the tap list and being able to be like, all right, well, I tried this IPA and I tried this IPA and I tried this stout, but what else have I never had? Or what, you know, because if you go, it's like if you go to a restaurant six times, you know, you're not going to. Some people will eat the same thing. I eat the same thing. You know, but I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> guilty. <laughs> guilty. It depends on the restaurants. Some restaurants, they, nope. they gain my trust and I can get a couple of things, but there's, man, I get the thing and I'm like, nope. I don't want to, I don't want to fuck this up. Yep, yeah, exactly. Right? I, look, <laughs> I get it. I got a finite number of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, the worst thing is getting something and paying a whole, a whole meal's worth of dollars oh, I and hate not that. liking it. I right. hate it. It's the worst. Um, How do you think... The, your, your model, right, with with resurrecting the styles. How does that change the tap room experience, right? So, like, how many new styles of beers are people are trying to are going to try? Like, are they just going there? Are there groups coming and doing taste testing? Like, how does how does that change that experience for you all there? I I think that we do we do have a lot of folks coming in and trying a bunch of different beers. I mean, I was I was at the bar uh, having a beer and George got a little slammed, so I went behind the bar and there were people that wanted short pours. Just small pours of everything, I so they could try pours, try try everything on the menu, and it's, it's shots of beers. <laughs> well, our short pours are eight ounces, so yeah. I mean, but that's yeah. the thing about eight ounces is that like it's a it's a nice like I can I can experience the beer, but I'm not committed to the full sixteen because I don't always want that whole thing. I mean, especially mm-hmm. with the higher ABV beers and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Like, and I used to be able to like. Back in my younger days, yeah, my wild 30s, I used to be able to like, you know, pound a couple of pounders and like high BVs or whatever. But I love the eight ounce experience where I can get into it. And if I want another one, I have the option, but mm-hmm. I'm not there for the whole 16. You know what I mean, yeah. so shout out to y'all for the, for the short port. Not, not so much the 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 what do you call the dips the sampler dips the um, oh the, uh, the, flights? the flights the flights yeah I mean the flights like yeah you know but I mean I don't even you know what I mean like that's a bit but a nice eight ounce pour mm-hmm. yeah give me that yeah you know I mean like let me experience that and, and move on from it so congratulations yeah. for that thanks or, thank you for that of course um, yeah it's been going well you're yeah. like a beer museum right. <laughs> 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 the, the, I mean, it is like a beer museum you could taste it but it's like all these styles that I don't know why I, I wonder why this went out of style is it like super difficult to brew or why Why do you know why any of these fell out of favor I I have no idea Germany I don't know yeah. <laughs> they the, really like lagers over there the great maybe. fire of yeah I mean 1939 um, that wiped out all of the <laughs> all, all the Lindenbach right <laughs> there were two the fire would make more smoke though yeah, More right. Smoke in the beer. That, so, yeah. so you know, speaking of diversity in, yeah, you know I mean, tap lines or whatever. Like, you know, it seems as if like culture is, you know, it, is a big thing as well in the brewing industry, right? I mean, there's a lot of people making great liquids, but ultimately, that's you know, when 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 I when I walk into say a trace, when I walk into like a necro, you know what I mean, like the the culture of it, you know what I mean, the vibe of it or whatever. I guess uh, how how do you go about building a culture on top of the liquid? Uh, well, that was something that Ben and I uh, talked about from the start, which was another thing that uh, made the job so attractive is he he was like, I want to have the most diverse team. I want to have the most diverse tap room. He's like, I want this to be one of our top priorities. And I was like, hooked. Um, and he, you know, he's the owner, so it's his money. And he has put his money where his mouth is because I've come to him on multiple occasions and been like, all right, we need to do this and let's try this. And how can we do that? So um you know, in our hiring practices, it's it's huge. Uh, we try to make the the tap room a very welcoming place for everyone. Um, and we started doing the industry diversity happy hours with Trace. Uh, so we have a it's every month. One's at it's rotating whether it's at Necromancer or at Trace. 
uh, usually within the first week of the month. Um, and we do that to, you know, if folks want to get in the industry or if they're in the industry and they want to have other folks that are like them and just hang out, have a, have a way to get together. Or like I said, if they, they want to get into the industry and they don't feel comfortable, you know, just going up to people and talking, they can come to one of our happy hours, find some people, chat, ask them how they got in the industry. It's just kind of a way, you know, there's, a, there's some, uh, female identifying happy hours going on. And I was like, well, you know, I was talking to Nina and I was like, why don't we have something for everybody? Um, so it doesn't matter who you are as long as, you know, you want to come and, and feel safe and comfortable and be able to do that. Um, you know, and being a queer person, we are going to have pride in two weeks. We're having a, a banger of a pride festival. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm also <laughs> scared because it's like the biggest event I think we're going to have. Uh, it's a three day event. Um, and it's going to be a banger. I am super excited. So we have uh, Thursday night will be a ladies and femme identifying night. I will preface this with all are welcome to all three. Just because it is specified doesn't mean you can't come and enjoy. And that's going to have a crush hour, which is a rotating uh, happy hour with uh, three drag, three or four drag kings performing. Uh, Friday, we have a collab with Leona's that's getting released. We're doing a Leona's ice cream sandwich and beer pairing event with Formosa from Jellyfish playing. And then Saturday is the big event. So you wanted to do like a pride market from 12 to 4 uh, where we have queer owned businesses, queer line businesses, tabling and selling wares. We also have uh, some brewery friends that are queer aligned or queer focused. Uh, so we have Trace and Mindful and we have Boyd and Blair cocktails. And then we have uh, Two Phrase pouring uh, and we're going to have bands and the tabling event. And then we take a little break. And then in the evening, we're going to have Honey and the Dollhouse Extravaganza Drag Queens wow. that oh, night. It's going to be like a rain. Lineup, man. Honey, yeah. you get crazy. So, the, <laughs> so I, just as a as a straight man, I got to ask, you know what I mean? Like, so the Q word, is that a thing? Like, like you if can I, say queer. I can say, say I, queer. I, can I say like queer. queer. Yes. Okay, because I, I like, so you had said it and then I said it and then you, like, you brave, Kat, was like Kat was like, Kat was like, you can't even, say that word. I was like, I thought I could because I, I heard, wasn't addressing like, it yeah, I mean, So I didn't know if it was like, yeah, I mean, I was like, I, was like, I thought I could. I didn't know. So I had to ask. So now. There should be a seminar on all the acceptable <laughs> or like a pamphlet, all the acceptable <laughs> ways I, to. You know, I, I do the LG LGBTQIA plus, like, you know what I mean? Like the whole, it's whatever. It's a lot to yeah, say, I mean, though. It is a lot, yeah, you know I mean? You know, and it's like, yeah, you know I mean, so like, I, I heard you say it, so I said it, and then she was like, you can't say that word. I was like, oh, shit, maybe I fucked up. Yeah, you know I mean, so I'm glad that we have the-, the In middle school, I think cool. that word was like not something- Old school, so yeah. like when yeah, I, I was a kid, it was, yeah. was not great. Yeah. But now it's become acceptable. I would much prefer someone- call me a queer person rather than a homosexual. Mm. Really? Yes. I feel like homosexual is outdated and it's used in a way by certain people that can be discriminatory. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like homosexual and queer kind of flipped. I mean, I'm not speaking for the entire queer community. Mm, Let me just right. throw you that are, out yeah, there. Yeah, listen, I don't do always, I'm not always, I'm not always <laughs> in, in the know <laughs> either. Uh, but for me personally and, and the, the folks that I run with, queer is usually what is preferred. And I would rather people say that because it's it's all encompassing or it's supposed to be. And then, you know, having to say LGBTQIA plus it's there's a lot. Mm, yeah. No, no, no. I feel you. I mean, easy like, to type, but not to say. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I mean African-American is a long word. I mean, I'm black. So I mean, you just say black and it's cool. As long as you're not, you know, as long as you put the S on it. I mean, Ed. blacks. <laughs> <laughs> then if you're like, come on, bro. Like, yeah, it's the same you? thing with homosexuals. Yeah. You're like, okay, here we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, had to, I had to like check a dude. Like he was, he was like, oh yeah, you know, some blacks came in. I was like, bro. Yeah, that, that don't gonna, sound good. You, you got to stop calling. You, no, bro. That's Might not. Like, they like, came in. Like who? <laughs> <laughs> the others. <laughs> so, in 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 your um, you know in your intentional you know um, in your intentional uh, uh, efforts to diversify and whatnot, have you found it to be? You know I mean, like beneficial? Have you gotten pushback on that? Like you know, because oftentimes people ask, well, why would we do that? You know I mean, like you know, especially when you're looking at businesses, right? Businesses are always looking at the bottom line. Do, like, you know, what what are the advantages and, and, you know, even what are some of the diff disadvantages and some of the hurdles? More people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that nothing has been at a disadvantage as far as the company is concerned, as far as, like, how we feel everything is going. I think, if anything, it's been uh, to the advantage. And I don't think folks realize this. Like, if you diversify your team, if you diversify your tap room, you're diversifying your income. Um, 
I hate putting it like that because that's not what our goal is. That's not the reason that we're doing it. We're, right. we're doing it to to make folks feel like there is a brewery that they can go to and feel comfortable because I want to go to a brewery that I can go to and feel comfortable and not have to worry. And that's what I want to provide for other folks. And I also want to provide uh, employment for folks that they feel safe and comfortable and might not have the same situation somewhere else. So that's what I'm trying to get out of it. But for business owners right. who I mean, aren't thinking about it, guys, the bottom line, you're going to make more money. You're going to make more money. You're going to make more money. Like more people, they you have don't more people that want everywhere. to have your product. You're right. going to make more money. So I think it's important um, for folks to realize that. I mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's the best reason for it. I mean, you know, cause like for it's me, derivative. It's, yeah, it's derivative. Yeah. It's a natural derivative. And, and, and there's nothing to, I don't think you're wrong for pointing that out. If you're a business owner, right? Hey, these, these, this group has been ignored or largely pushed to the side over here. We're providing a space, you know, they spend their money here. I mean, I, we're not giving it to them for free. They spend yeah. their money here. You yeah. know what I mean? And I, I think in craft, at least in my experience, and I, I'd like to ask, so has that been, I mean, has that even been a hurdle at in, to any extent? It seems to be a very, um, how do, okay, so I don't want to say accepting community, but I, I, I've never seen where it's been an issue amongst issue from my, but my vantage point is of a straight black male. So, you know, we've worked very hard day and I at integrating in that sense, right, mm -hmm. for, for black folks to, to be involved in the industry. We haven't seen the struggle for, you know, queer folk to 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 get involved. Has that been something that because I don't even see how that would like, how does that even matter? I think, I think that's <laughs> funny that you brought that up because I did tell myself that I wasn't going to lie in interviews about that mm. anymore. Uh, so, no, it hasn't been always uh, puppies and kitties. OK. I have faced discrimination in the industry. It sucks, uh, especially as a queer woman, which is right. Kind I of guess you get the double, the double yeah, entendre, kinda. right? You're a woman head <laughs> brewer, yeah, and, and, and queer, identify so. as queer. So it's like, do you say identify as queer or are you just, I just queer? Say queer? You got to. I'm an old hat. You got to educate us. Please, we, I don't know if you want education from me. All right, struggling to do the best of me. I'm an old hat, so I don't know if like. I'm still learning myself. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, it's it's been tough, which is unfortunate. You know, I have, let me just say this. It, it's been tough and I have faced a lot of discrimination. I will say I have faced a lot of discrimination and it sucks. But I will say that there are people in this community that I have been able to lean on and that have been super accepting and have had my back. And they're some of my awesome. closest brewing friends and they know who they are. And um, they're the people that I can go to and feel, even though most of them are not women or queer, I can feel like I fit in. I can feel like I can talk to them and be like, yeah, this happened. And then they, you know, get all puffy and want to <laughs> do something about it. But, you know, it, it has been nice in that sense that there are great people in this industry. But I will say it's not perfect. Um, and I'm trying really hard to make it better. And I know that everyone at Negromancer is trying really hard. We have breweries that are doing awesome things like Trace. Uh, which makes hiring very easy uh, since they have that that program and they're just churning out incredible brewers who are also diverse, which makes things awesome. And I love what they're doing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think we're we're getting better. And like I said, I'm going to recognize we try. Yeah. Yeah. I think, <laughs> as long oh, as you yeah. recognize. No, because I, I think that it's important for, you know, queers to if they if queers can say and I hate saying it more than once, it still feels <laughs> it still feels wrong. But if, if folks in that community feel like, hey, folks are trying. Right. Then then we're taking a step in the mm -hmm. right direction. I always feel it weird to discriminate because, like, I don't know if don't take this as an offensive one, but I queers typically be like the most creative motherfuckers like they'd be so diverse in thought like it's like why not have them around they create good they be having good fucking times they got like a whole vibe going on so yeah yeah i mean i probably get all my fashion tips from there be like you know some, <laughs> they, some, can, they run the fashion industry right, yeah, nah, nah, yeah i mean man, like I'm, it's it's just diversity and thought being open to shit like people but i mean <clears throat> but yeah no allies are extremely important and you know, i mean in any of the work that you try to do to like you know uh you know move um you know uh you know oppressed individuals and like you know marginalized communities and whatnot 
that work doesn't, you know, what I mean, happen without, I mean, some some form of allyship mm-hmm. and whatnot and understanding. So it's dope that you've been able to, you know, connect and find that um, in order to to progress and whatnot. Um, so uh, what is this? You know, we were talking about IPAs, yep. and now we're sitting with this double Westie, double Westie, double Westie out here. Uh, so you know, tell tell us about it and tell tell us why you're so proud of it. You know what I mean, what? I love this beer. It is delicious. I, I like. I love the return of the West Coast. Damn Same. Mean, like it's Same. It's nice. Yeah, so I grew up on West Coast IPAs. It's one of the, it's literally the style that got me into beer. Uh, and I love West Coast IPAs. Um, and I grew in, up in Indiana, which you all probably know about Three Floyds, mm-hmm. like kings of West Coast. Yeah, um, we used to bring us some of that to. Uh, yeah, I mean, shout out to Ryan. He had come yeah, out Ryan to the shows. Come and, to the, yeah, shout out. To, we saw him just recently too. He was at. Uh, what the fuck did I see? Uh, he was at the uh, the uh, rap party. Yeah. Yeah, the season finale. Yeah, man. <laughs> good brother. Good brother. But no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, you're good. Uh, yeah. So this is we have a just a single West Coast called Specific Gravity, and it's great. I love it. And then this is the double version, uh, and it's. The reason I like it is it's it's eight and a half percent and it drinks like something that's six. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's and it has right just below a, where you got to warn us. Yeah, right. <laughs> that was the one thing I was gonna say that it drinks like a pale ale. Yeah, yeah. 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 So there was a there's a beer the the beer that influenced this beer is uh, Three Floyd's Arctic Panzer Wolf. I remember the first time I had it and I drank way too much of it and it was a double West Coast and it was. I think it's eight and a half or nine and I didn't realize it. And then I had a bad day the next day, but, <laughs> but I, I love that beer. Um, yeah, this one's, it's hopped with the Citra Simcoe and Centennial and it's, it's everything I want in a, uh, in a West coast, just enough hop, caramel malt backbone. So crispy. what, what is your opinion of the ABV? What, what's your threshold for, Hey, I got to tell you what this is <laughs> before you drink it. Uh, usually, usually above eight. I'll be like, okay, you're you a know. little more conservative than us. Cause we, we, we've agreed on nine. Nine is it, okay. man. Don't hand well, we've agreed on something. We're in the, we're in the, uh, we're in the safe zone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're in the safe zone. You could have given us that and not told us what it was. Right. You've been good. <laughs> Yeah. Half more ABV in it. I'd have and, to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick the next beer. Yeah. What? Oh, I mean, I mean, oh, I, yeah, I, I, some, see a, uh, I see a, I see a. Hey, I'm trying to, but this bitters. Yeah, there can we you, go. Can we, can we talk about this? Oh bitters? yeah. Oh, we I missed this part one. of the cast. Yeah. We didn't. We haven't done this in a while. Know, it's just like man. a bunch of different beers. Yeah. Like we going, we going around and figuring out. So as we, as, as I, a professional as I, here, as I do my, um, my, as I finish what's on my plate and pour the next, uh, bitter as the death in the gallows, and these names. So first and foremost, why 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 wear the board walk ins? I mean, and also, please tell us about the can art and who does this because it is it's gorgeous. all death. So yeah, I mean, it's beautiful <laughs> death, but it's all death. <laughs> I will preface this with: I usually don't have much to do with the names or the mm-hmm. artwork, and I like it that way. Because uh, if I were going to name a beer, I'd be like. Friedrich Lichtenheiner, uh, <laughs> German Pilsner. Um, but uh, so Ben also owns a advertising agency called Top Hat. Uh, they represent a lot of beer brands, including like Iron City and Rubens. Uh, and the majority of the artwork is done by a guy named Ian, and he totally kicks ass. Uh, and they come up with the aims, the names. Uh, the reason we call bitter is death and the gallows is because that this is another resurrection style. It's called a Merce Burger, and that is what Merce they Burger. said about the beer Merce Burger. Uh, in an article. What would you? What style would you say a Merce Burger is most similar to? That it's going to be a bitter black IPA. Bitter black oh, IPA. See, I knew I, I see, I knew I wasn't like that yet. You know what I mean, <laughs> like, I love black, like black IPA. I believe for me is my favorite style of beer. Like, it's hoppy, it's dark. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like I, you know, and it's here's the thing, man. Like people will hand me sometimes. They'll hand me like the like a, 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 a like a like a, 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 a white stout, and it's like. Like or like a coffee blonde, like a blonde. You know I mean, and it's like I don't. For like, if it's not roasted, I just can't. Like that, I don't, like I can't get down with it. You know what I mean? Like I need that shit to be. You know, I need that. I need the black in there. You know what I'm saying? So I, I very much appreciate. You know, you the black melanin idea. in your beer. <laughs> <laughs> I was just say you need some melanin in your beer, <laughs> right? 
the roasty finish is always a good the yeah. roasty or the barrel finish is always dope. Yeah, no, the roast is what is what gets it, and then you got the hops in there. Mm-hmm. Cause like I mean, like from I my think, understanding, yeah. like the 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 American stout is is hoppy, right? Like that is, is that the is that what separates American stout from like a, you know what I mean, like any, I guess. I mean, it depends. Are you putting donuts in it or are we talking just. No, I'm just a straight, like, so like, so Black is Beautiful came out, right? Mm-hmm. And the base recipe for Black is Beautiful was like, it had like Centennial, like a mm-hmm. Cascade. I mean, it looked like an IPA, but it was like, you know what I mean? But like, I was told like, that's kind of like the traditional, mm-hmm. like American style where it's like, it's got some hot backbone to yep, it, you know yep, what I mean? With yep. the roast and whatnot. And. When I think when I drink an IP, like a black IPA, it kind of reminds me of like a tradition, like an, an American. It kind of reminds me of that, but like a little lighter. You mm-hmm, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you know, in in body, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I would say for American stouts, we're usually those IBUs are higher because mm-hmm. of all the, you know, you got a lot of a lot of stuff going on with the with the stout. You got a lot of sugar that you got to kind of balance. It's more I think about a balance thing, and we, you know, Americans are usually using Centennial and stuff, so. Yeah, I'd say for American stout, it's a lot closer than a black, to a black IPA than like a foreign extra stout or something because, you know, that's going to be leaning more. You still have the IBUs there, but it's usually done with, you know, noble hops. You're not getting any of that citrus flavor, uh, and they're not usually hopped as much as American uh, stouts. Yeah. I do love a good foreign extra, man. When are y'all, when are y'all, when are y'all, when are y'all making we that We just again? made it a couple of weeks ago, but I'm sure oh, you missed it. It's gone. I missed it. And oh, I just gave away my last can. Gone. Oh, See? man. I, no, I remember I that had thing's it. thing's a banger. Uh, I had it. I mean, I guess the first time you uh, mm-hmm. brewed it, and I just like, why don't we see more foreign extra stouts? I don't know. I love them. They're great. They're everything a stout should be. Oh, man. That's, and that you can sounds like a name of a beer. I'm not. Saying you should name it that because y'all all centered around death, but <laughs> <laughs> everything this stout used to be, maybe. I don't yeah, know. It's everything a stout should be. That's what we're gonna we're gonna change. It's no longer gonna be highway to house. It's just gonna be everything a stout should be. Highway to hell. House, house. Oh, because okay. it was a collaboration with House Bottle Shop. Uh, oh, okay. mm. yes. I'm like, damn, y'all getting real dark. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Like, I mean. I mean, you may have knowledge or not, but like why? Because I mean, I didn't know what a foreign extra stout was until uh, a Haitian friend of mine was like, yo, we don't be drinking this Guinness here. Like, you know what I mean, All like, right. yeah, it's a different thing. Right. So like they have that in like the, uh, you know, West Indies and like different. Yeah, I mean, there's a like, they have it there. And then I had it when I went down to like the, you know, the brewery down in Baltimore. And I was like, holy shit, like why, like why isn't this more popular or whatever? Like what, like, you know, like, like, do you have any, any understanding why like Guinness gives us that 4% what they give us versus what they're giving to the, to the islands? Money, I, man, you know, it's money. It's, <laughs> maybe. I yeah. mean, that or, or I don't, maybe do Americans just not like flavor. I don't maybe, know. Maybe. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> But you we do. We put. Person, we put. Right? A, white, yeah, like, yeah. a white person said that. Just to be clear. Just to be clear. I didn't come from here today. Based on their chicken, I would agree. I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're all I'm saying. Is, I will follow that up with we are putting like baked goods in our stouts, but like you can just omit all that. Mm. I'm being biased, and just make a foreign extra stout. And you're good. Man, it's so delicious. It's, it's nice and thick. It's got some butter mm-hmm. in there. The process for that, for, for the stout, is is it more difficult to make or is it more expensive? I mean, why? It's more- uh, it is a little more expensive because you're going to use a little bit more grain, but not yeah. that much. I mean, it's... Yeah, but when you're talking about making large quantities and shit like that, like, the margins be thin for folks. It's true. It's true. And for some reason, I mean, I think if Guinness could sell it here mm. in the amount that it sells the yeah, other they probably, they probably would, would yeah, but yeah economic is yeah folks in america are like no i want this irish stone or i want uh what is it guinness gold or guinness what is the the light beer the light uh, guinness yeah, yeah I, I, well I guinness know. makes like a blonde oh yeah the blonde do they um, they do yeah i you know what i was not I, I was never really a huge beer drinker until the podcast i started drinking more beer so i i don't really have any affinity to a lot of the like popular 
you know, Corona, obviously. But Corona to me is just like, all right, look, I've had enough alcohol tonight, but I don't want to not have something to drink. I need something to hold. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean. So that's Corona. And then, like, at, at some point, Corona versus Heineken was like an East Coast, West Coast beef for me. <laughs> so it was like, you, you was on one side of the fence or the other. So I, I view Heineken the same way. I was never Bud or Miller or nothing like that. Like, Guinness, I never really got into that. So I, like, how, I wonder what percentage of beer drinkers are like, Based on name recognition, like I know I buy Nikes because yeah. they not because they got the check, right? Like how many people is drinking Guinness because it's Guinness? Yeah, I mean it's easily recognizable <laughs> it's, and whatnot. Yeah. So as a brewer, what like what is like how do you progress? Like what is it that you do to sharpen and hone your skills? I keep changing stuff, <laughs> so I don't ever stop tweaking. Uh, there's there's a couple recipes that we have that I've stopped tweaking. Because I'm like, okay, okay. If you keep tweaking yeah. it, it's going to get worse. And you don't want that. So just, that's fine. Uh, but it's it's always just continually trying to make things better. Luckily, we keep doing these resurrections. So I keep to do being able to do new styles. But, you know, every time we make something again, it's how do we make it better. Our hazies, I think we have gone through, well, at least the house hazy is like 12 different <laughs> iterations at this point. Just continually trying to make it better. It's, you know... And then I'll go out and I'll try somebody else's something and I'll be like, oh, shit, how do I make it like that? Uh, so I think that's the way to keep it keep it going and not get in a rut. So you're looking at like what, like ingredients, the amount, like the the time that it sits. I mean, are you like, are like all of that? All, all that, that yeast choice, uh, how it's fermenting, are they spunding? Uh, are they releasing, like if I have a really good hazy, like, to what you said is is it something that was released right away or then letting that sit in the tank for a little bit to get a little less green mm. would this yeast work better uh and give you the flavor profile a little bit better um kind of doing that stuff yeah and then grain has a lot to do with it how do you how do you uh maintain like do you how do you maintain your i guess love of beer given that it's a profession. Because they say, once you make a passion a profession, you got to find a new passion. That's not true. I love beer. So, like, how do you maintain, <laughs> like, I mean, like, when you go to different, like, spaces, are you always judging? Are you always, like, I mean, on the clock? Or are you always, you know what I mean? Like, and you're just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, usually when I go somewhere else, I'm always just tasting. I'm like, well, how do they do that? Okay. I mean, I, but I also just, I so enjoy beer and so enjoy beer making. Having done a, a couple other things career wise, it's the one career that like I could be dog tired and I'm just like, I don't want to do this today. And then I get to work and I'm like, we're going to do this today. Yeah, and then I enjoy it. And then, day. Huh? You've had more jobs than day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we, do. we I've, I've not had a person on here who's like had more jobs than yeah, you. Yeah, you, you've been you got them right. beat. Yeah. I'm eclectic. Okay. Another dope beer name. Not saying you should name one down. I'm just saying. Hey, so, Ben, uh, you should write that one down. So let me ask you this. What is a resurrection that you're looking forward to? Oh, gosh. If you don't want to give up the game, you don't have to. Even though if you name it, you're probably going to name a beer that ain't nobody heard of. So I mean. Oh, gosh. That's tough. Uh, Where do you find your inspiration outside of, you know, just like Googling online or whatever? Like Just looking around, looking in old books. I mean, that's how we found the Pearl beer. No one had it. It wasn't listed anywhere. This beer that. Do you like go to the library and like, you know, well, find, I like find decimal, that books on the microfiche? And, 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 no, I'm not going to go that. For that. I got to make beer for a living. <laughs> I wish I could do that. I'd be like, college like, again. I'm all like, you know. Dust it off. You got to like blow it. Yeah, be <laughs> like it's a Necronomicon and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, uh, we've got a we've got a Breslau Light Shopes in the tank that's tasting. Wait, say that again. It's called. I don't even know if I'm saying it right because it's German. <laughs> I didn't know this. Um, it's called. Nobody knows if you're saying it right. So it's you right. true. Yeah, all okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whatever you say is what it is. So we made a dark Shopes, which is it's essentially a wheat beer, but it's so most wheats like Hefeweizens are fermented with Hefeweizen yeast, and they're right. fermented hot, and it gives you that banana clove flavor. These this was a, a style that uh, was fermented cleanly, uh, so it doesn't have any of that. So you're just like showcasing the wheat. We have a light one coming out for that. When you say ferment cleanly, uh, with like uh, 
yeast that doesn't put off a ton of esters. So there's no cl- like how uh, the Chico yeast behaves in, a, in an IPA. You're not getting a ton of yeast characteristic from that, other than like it's it's clean. Crisp. It's just alcohol. Give me the alcohol. Yeah. So it's Don't letting the it's letting the the wheat shine. Uh, that I am excited about. the The one I'm pretty really pumped about is for mixed culture. We're gonna do. I don't know how to speak French. I'm sorry. Me neither. Uh, yeah. Beer de ette. Uh, it's like a beer de Mars. Beer de it, Yeah, there you go. There you go. Beer de uh, it. So whenever, I'm just going to like record that. And then anytime I have to talk about this beer, I'm just going to play that. Um, <laughs> but it's essentially a summertime beer de Mars. So I have, I liked Perfect. beer de guards in college. Perfect time. Um, and they're great. And we made a beer de guard for Thanksgiving. And I was like, no, yeah, it's all right. And then we just made a beer to print temps, which is a spring beer to Mars. So it's uh, beer to guards can be lagered. They can be cold conditioned for a little while. This one's supposed to be drunk fresh. It's a little less alcohol. It's a little less, uh, a little crisper. And it's kind of, we're kind of doing the same thing with the summer one. And I fell in love with that beer. That beer was banging. Um, and we're making another one and we're using all French hops for it. And I'm totally stoked for it to come out. What can we expect at Barrel and Flow? So. Barrel and Flow, we're probably going to do a pastry stout. Mm, I'm going to be a good pastry stout. Oh, <laughs> so give we're me, working, I, we're give working me working all with, of that shit. We're working with Sweet Little Eats, and we've had a couple of meetings Ooh, so far. Out of the yeah. Yes, I'm excited. Um, she gonna also made involved. all the cup- yo yo. She made the henny ice cream. She's gonna I have tell Hennessy people about involved. that shit all the yes. time, man. It's one of my and the henny uh, cupcakes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the henny cupcakes. Oh, my God. So she was talking about having a a, a chocolate cake stout and i was like okay dope she's talking about having ice cream with it uh mm. you know she's she's float. amazing like a stout we, ice cream like making she's floats. gonna make ice cream to go with the stout <gasps> and you're uh, gonna make floats i hope so Ooh, y'all gonna have everybody stout full floats. you're gonna have everybody that thing that you can do the, you, can you know, do never had a stout float before you can you me? go to you go to the store you get your stout you get you some ice cream you put it in it and taste it and your I mind will be blown it won't like curdle the milk. Not really. Really? Oh, yeah. Listen, man, it just bubbles up, and you, right. You just drink it. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Uh, but no, uh, she provided cupcakes for our one year, which were banging. They're great cupcakes. I'm totally pumped. But yeah, yeah we're we're talking about doing a chocolate cake inspired imperial stout. It's gonna be dark. Put some chocolate and rich. in there. Mm. Yeah, I'm hoping mm-hmm. thick. Put some vanilla in there. Mm. Mm. Nice. So uh, it's also we gonna be here. boozy. It just it it feels like it's, it's gonna, gonna be boozy. Be bo- yeah, it feels very boozy. <laughs> it's gonna go above that threshold. It's gonna be yeah, boozy it's gonna be, and it's boozy. It's gonna have to be a warning. You, know I mean? you gotta, you gotta <laughs> let be folks a warning know. On the label. You gotta let people know. <laughs> so before before we get out of here, um, what is your favorite form of potato? Fuck. My favorite form of potato? Mm-hmm. French fries all the way. What kind of French fry? Like, cut, no, no, oh, not crinkle so cut. No, 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 cut. no. Nobody <laughs> says for crinkle. We had a crinkle we had cut. So and many people have said no crinkle one. cut, and you guys have never hated as hard. That's crinkle the, cut that's fries. I definitely are hated crap. Them. Right? Thank They're you. We, thank I'm just, you. I'm going like, to be the unpopular no person. No, no, we it's all agree. All. We all agree. <laughs> Why even make that crinkle <laughs> cut? Have you all heard of waffle fries before? Waffle fries are amazing. They're so much better than crinkle cut. The spiral ones better than crinkle cut. I like the spiral. Tater tots. Tater tots are better than crinkle cut. Literally every potato is better than a crinkle cut. Tater tot is Every last one. But what is your favorite? Uh, I mean, it's got to be the ones that are double fried and they're like, you know, if you get... Double fried? You've never heard of double fried fries? They got double fried fries? Yeah, so they're... they're, Fry fries. You know, they're they're the long fry looking fries, but they'll fry them and then they let them sit and then they fry them again. They crispy as hell. Where? Most restaurants do it that way. No, most restaurants mm, nah, ain't yeah, double nah, fry. Know, but nobody told me to do this. Most fry restaurants ain't giving you two two spins in that place. <laughs> I've worked in a lot that's of restaurants. Extra time. We ain't never there fried was this place. Twice. All right, so if you ever go to any place that's like a Belgian beer hall, okay, oh, so you, you go to you gotta to, get the okay, frites. So, you gotta get the frites. Those are double fries. The frites. frites. Okay, um, so point. Do you ever go to Point or Park Brews? I haven't been yet. I keep wanting to go. I haven't. They been have yet. the frites. They do that with. Are the, they good though? Are they, they good are frites? Good. They put and them with the aioli and stuff. They do it with the. They do it with. I think it's mayonnaise. Aioli. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's all it is. It's just a fancy word for yeah. it, right? <laughs> yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty good. Uh, I haven't oh, been shit. to Point Brews, but Park Brews I go to all. That's okay. I I just admitted that it's probably my favorite restaurant. 
restaurant. Okay. I go there every time, every birthday. I go if they've there. got fries, like they got the frites. actually Belgian frites. That is the way to go. You get that, and you get yourself a good beer. See, I don't know how authentic Belgian they are. They they just frites. I don't know. I haven't been to Belgium, no, but no, I know. No. It's- I, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm saying you've been you've been more. It seemed like you know a little. You knew about double potatoes. fried. You knew uh, about double fried fries. I love These potatoes. French fries, fries are like my middle name. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm surprised you asked that question because I was like, oh, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, I, it's a whole thing. It's the first time in 2022 he's pulled. It was, that yeah, it is. Good uh, job, man, good job. Uh, now, now I, but now I know I need to go find some double fry, some fry fries, fries, some fried fries. Frites. They're called frites. Frites. All right. Pizanos does fry the curly fries, but they're done twice. Oh, hey. I don't, I don't know, man. They're called Pazano's. curly frites. Yeah, you don't want to go Sound in that like... place. That's right across from the old studio. You don't want to go there. Yeah. Well, why'd you get on the mic and say that? <laughs> pretty good. They're pretty good. <laughs> you could have, you could have not said it. <laughs> frites. All right. Frites. Now I found All the it. Way. Now I got, an, I got a mission. The frites with the muscles. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. You ever heard about this? What is it? How do you say muscles no. in French? Moule frites? Moule frites? Moule. I, I don't Wait, they know. they got fries and mussels? Yeah, that's, I that's, love mussels. That's, that's Belgian. Love fries. Bro, they that's got Belgian Creole as hell. mussel fries. There's no, Belgian. No, no, they, no, you get the fries with the mussels. Yeah, so the they get the mussels. The, you had to plate of mussels, and they'll put the thing of fries on top, and they had a, the aioli or the mayonnaise, and you can, and it's great, bro. I get the Creole or the, the sausage. Yo, bro, go <sighs> to Park right, Rouge. Right, matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, I owe you for your fortieth. We're going to the park, bro. That's my favorite restaurant. Right, we bro, doing it. Man. I go, I go, I man. go all, bro. Yeah. That's the one. Man, I went there once back in the day. Of a rich friend took me there back in my, you know what I mean? And I was and like, oh, this is fancy. Now. And I ain't never went back because I couldn't afford it. And we can so eat outside like, now too. Yeah. Uh, right on um, Bryant Street, right by. Um, uh, no, I know, I know where it's yeah. at. I went there once, like. 15 years ago, some shit like that. I, I give me back. a whole garden every Man. time I do it, right. too. I don't know why. Fry fries. As you should. It's very light, and it's just, it just works. It if just you're going to eat it, you kind of got to have the Belgian beard. Are, get are they hand cut? They got to be hand cut. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you it's kidding not, me? Why it's not, have I not just now it's figured not out this It's not if it's not hand cut. Oh, yeah, they okay. hand cut well, that see, thing, and they like soak them in the grease, and then they... Oh my god. Maybe then you might have to come with me and I mean I'm not gonna say no. I'm not gonna say no. Because you got now you gotta grade the free. (laughs) (laughs) Cause I don't I ain't had no other freaks. Now, I might be putting this dude on the bad freaks. <laughs> <laughs> the fraudulent freaks. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the best way that anyone's asked me to go to have dinner with them. Do you want to come dry these french fries and tell me if they're any good? Yes, yes, I do. Yes. Okay. All right, well, let's do that. But before we do that, you got to let the people know where they can find you other than when we out at Park Brews eating the frites. So oh. Necromancer is uh, 2257 Babcock Boulevard. The Instagram is at Necromancer Brewing. My Instagram is Little Low PGH. Uh, yeah. I think that's everything. Did I miss something? We'll be at Barrel and Flow. Totally pumped. Come to Pride Fest. It's going to be fun. Give them, give them the info again. Give them it's the- uh, June 9th through 11th. Uh, again, Thursday night is Ladies Female Identifying Night with Crush Hour and Drag King shows by Soft Boy and a couple others. Friday is the Leona's Ice Cream Sandwich and Beer Pairing with our collab. And then Saturday is the Pride Market from 12 to 4 with bands and Queer Identifying and allied businesses and breweries and then in the evening from 8 to 11 we have honey and the dollhouse drag queens and then i also forgot to mention that we are doing collabs with leona's pigeon bagel and uh valkyrie donut that weekend Mm. also while we're there uh did we cover mixed culture fest not a little bit i talked about it a little bit yes yes in in july we'll be at mixed culture fest uh and that's where you'll get to find the beer to beer to yeah, there we go. <laughs> or if you're <laughs> if you're not great at speaking French like me, beer de summer. Beer de it, beer de it is very thoughty. Beer de it, de lit. Do you know what they call this? That might even be racist because I don't even know what that was. Chocolate blue. <laughs> Let the, I was watching Wolf of Wall Street earlier. I don't know why I'm sounding like the dude that they went to Switzerland and laundered the money. I'm sounding like him. Just let the people know where they can find us today. Oh, man. If you're looking for us, you can find us on EpicastNetwork.com slash PartnersPod. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Lips, and Google Play. 
and Spotify under Drink. We Google, I'm sorry. He left. He. I was looking at. I'm sorry. It's our second. Hey, it's our second. Find us on IG, Twitter, and Facebook at Partner Spot. Also, August 13th. Uh, actually, August 12th through the 14th. Man, you can find us down uh, at the Strip District, uh, BarrelandFlow.com, um, and uh, Necromancer with a uh, with a with a cake stout. Let cake stout. Flow. Sweet little eats. Come through, man. Barrelandflow.com. Fall through, man. Hey, we want to thank Lauren for coming through, chopping it up with us, exposing me to new beers. Uh, I don't know what that that Littenberger, I'm probably fucking it up. Because <laughs> it's episode two or two. Fire. Yeah, just like is. just like the label. Very, thank, very good. It is very a nice, nice. label. It very is. good beer. If, thank if, you so much. If you want to find different styles, you want a different experience, go out to Necromancer, man. If you want a you know inclusive environment, go out there, man. We thank you for coming thank down. You. Uh yo, this is our first episode two of two in months. And we made yeah. it, damn it. We made it. Yeah. <laughs> we made it through. <laughs> so as always, drinking partners is the crew. Epicast is the family. And we out of here.